Hello and welcome to the Haven Homestead Podcast, where we learn and grow together on our way to living more sustainable lives. Today is episode 9, and we are going to be talking about uh, food security. More precisely, we're going to be talking about some tools to use in the kitchen. Five homestead kitchen tools. You can find out more about the homestead uh, kitchen tools and other other shows on havenhomestead.com in the podcast section. Also, we have other sections on there about um, the products that we offer and the classes we teach and lots of other things that we find important here on our homestead. Also, I want to remind you to uh, please check out our Patreon page that patreon p a t r e o n dot com slash haven homestead and uh we appreciate your help there keeps this show on the road and and helps us af- afford things like this uh new microphone I got and things to make this podcast better and able to reach more people so the kitchen it's been said that the kitchen is the heart of the home, and I believe that as well for our home as it seems like the kitchen is the heart, and not only because it's kind of central, but because it seems like there's a lot of learning and growing and uh, happy memories that come from the kitchen. A lot of happy memories for me because I really like food, but uh, the kids have learned how to how to cook and wash dishes and lots of things that they that they've needed for their. Uh, you know, I think growing and the skills that they develop. So today, like I said, we're going to be talking about five homestead kitchen tools. I really think that in order to do your job right in the kitchen, you know, in order to um, make it a a happy and successful experience, whatever you have to do in the kitchen, you need the right tool for the job. And so these five uh, kitchen tools are going to help you in that. And, th- and these are some that, that we have and some that have done well for us. And so we're going to pass on our experiences to you and hopefully save you some headache and, and time and money. So number one, and it is probably the one that we use the most, we use it almost every meal, and that is the 12-inch cast iron skillet. We use the one by Lodge, the Lodge brand cast iron skillet but you know you can get any any sort of as long as it's real cast iron and i prefer the pre-seasoned ones because you can season them yourselves but yourself but it's a a little bit of a headache the pre-seasoned ones do just fine they've they've all done fine for me i've had seasoned and non-seasoned and i've liked the seasoned ones the pre-seasoned ones better so Today is the 2nd of March, 2017, and I was just on Amazon and saw a 12-inch cast iron uh, for $21.42, and the lid, the drawback to that is it doesn't come with a lid, so the lid is $31, so that's kind of a little bit of a $52 for uh, the skillet. Um, Just be warned that it is heavy, and the skillet plus the lid, you'll need to use two hands. And they have a handle on both sides, uh, uh, the regular handle that's that uh, like most frying pans, and then a handle on the other side to kind of hold on to it to assist you. And you're going to need it, especially when it's full of food, and if it has the lid on it, then it weighs quite a bit. But... It will last you your whole life. Um, I don't know that it will ever wear out. And the more you use it, the better seasoned it gets. Now, a little bit of uh, word to the wise on when you use a skillet, you or use cast iron rather, you need to not use soap when you wash it. When you when you wash it, just use hot water. You can put a little water in it. And heat it up on the stove. And that usually loosens everything up. And you can use your metal spatula to scratch the, 
you know, the, the, the stuff off and then use a paper towel or something to, to finish it out after you dump the water out with the, the pieces of, of, uh, food that you've loosened up off. And then once everything's, once it's, um, cleaned out, wiped out, then you can oil a paper towel or a rag and, you know, some, uh, vegetable oil and then wipe it around on the inside and store it oiled up so it doesn't get rusty. If for some reason it does lose its season, then you'll want to cover it all in grease, like shortening or lard or something like that, and put it in the oven. And you just have to uh, research on the internet how hot you want to get it up to. But you t- take it up to, you put it in the oven, take it up to a certain temperature, you know, put it in when the oven's cold. And then as the oven heats up, it takes it up to a certain temperature and you leave it at that temperature for a certain amount of time and then turn off the stove and it will, and leave the door shut so it doesn't cool down too quickly and it will slowly cool back down and all the oil will seep into the pores and re-season the cast iron, whatever it may be. If it's um, a skillet or a a frying pan or a Dutch oven or whatever the cast iron thing is. I will get those numbers for you and times, and I'll put them in the show notes. I just don't have them uh, ready ahead of time, so I'll get them for you. You know, a couple of the good reasons why you should have this skillet or, uh, you know, frying pan or some other thing like that is there's so many things you can do with it. They're versatile, and that's one of the main reasons that we have some of these that we made this list is most things should have more than one use uh some of the things you can do with them are is you can cook on the stove top of course like usual you could fry up chicken or or uh you know pork chop or fry eggs any of that sort of stuff you can with the lid on it you can bake in it just like uh, any other sort of baking pan or dutch oven sort of sort of uh use if you're if there's an intruder in your house, you can hit them with it, and they weigh a lot, so that would probably mess them up pretty good. Although I'd, you want to have a good handle on it because you don't want to slip. And you can also cook with coals on it. You can put coals underneath and on top, and cook just like you would with the Dutch oven. Turn out biscuits and all sorts of stuff like that. So there's lots of uses for them, and they're very durable. I mean, they're passed down from generation to generation and there's some really old uh, pieces out there that have been used for a lot of years just got to make sure to take care of them so number two on the list i put a high quality cutting board a cutting board is important especially for the longevity of your knives we make cutting boards here and they're made out of black walnut and maple as long as my black walnut supply doesn't run out we have uh they're about a inch, inch and a quarter, up to an inch and a half thick, and about 12 by 10, you know, I, I can go up to 12 inches wide on my on my planer, so they usually don't get any wider than 12 inches, but, you know, 12 by whatever length uh, is the order for, and I make mine with the side grain, and what I really like about our cutting boards is that the the boards don't seem to they don't seem to dull your knife like a bamboo board does bamboo is just so darn hard that it will dull your knife same with using a glass cutting board you know any of the other any of the other cutting boards we had a glass cutting board and you know drawing a knife across there uh you're just you're dulling it every single time that you go to cut something you're drawing a knife across the glass and you're just dulling it, so uh, it was a bad choice, and we got rid of that one. Also, the kind of softer plastic ones, if you keep using it, you know, pieces of plastic will go into your food, and that that's not good for you. They're kind of self-healing, they're really nice. Um, I like having the boards that are, uh, like we make them, they're side grain. They're not the end grain, which are the highest price boards, are usually the boards you can see the grain on the end of the and uh, kind of most butcher blocks and things like that are made out of the end grain, the high-end butcher blocks that are. 
that is, are made out of this end grain. I would like to start making some more of those, but I haven't got into that yet. I was making one for my mom. That's as far as I've got on, on end grain. We use side grain, which which are really nice, and we've turned out some really nice boards. And the ones we use in our house, we have two. They have held up really well, uh, despite heavy use. So if you're going to get a nice quality cutting board, you need to know how to keep, take care of it, just like, this, just like the uh, cast iron we talked about earlier. And the way you take care of a cutting board is you need to oil it periodically, just watch it when it starts getting kind of that um, dry look to it. Then you need to oil it with some mineral oil. We use a mineral oil beeswax mix. It makes it look really nice for a long time. Uh, what makes it last for a long time. It won't dry out, and it's just the way to go that we've found so far. Uh, number three on the list is something you may have never heard of, but it is called a spurtle. Sounds kind of like turtle, but it is called a spurtle. S-P-U-R-T-L-E, spurtle. This goes back a long time ago to Scotland when they used to have a spurtle, a flattened spurtle that they would use kind of like a spatula to turn oat cakes. And the spurtle kind of was lost over years and changed. The spurtle that most people think of now is kind of a dowel um, stirring stick for stirring spurtle, uh, porridge. In Scotland, they have a competition for the golden spurtle. The people make porridge, and whoever has the best porridge gets the golden spurtle. Anyways, it looks like a, a stirring stick. Well, ours is shaped like the old style, like a uh, kind of like a stirring spoon spatula hybrid thing. We use that all the time. We use it for uh, stirring when you're cooking, for serving up things. It has a, a bend in the belly where you can lean up you put it up against a pan if you're trying to strain out vegetables. It will let the water pass underneath but while holding while holding the you know vegetables in or whatever it is that you're trying to strain out. I also I also um put in a finger relief on the right hand side for right handed people and on the left hand side for left handed people so that it doesn't hurt your hand. So the story behind it is this lady, our neighbor she asked me if I could make um, a, a tool for her like, that she has in her kitchen. She said she's had it since the 70s, and it's been such a good tool, and she's used it all the time. And she said it came in a pizza-making kit. I said, all right, well, let me take a look at it. So I went over to her house and looked. I said, sure, I can, I can make this. And it was made out of oak. I brought it home and and kind of beefed it up a little bit uh, because the way it was you could see how it had been used over the years and it was thinner than it looked like it started but I noticed where the bevels were and how and what I was getting to was that where she had used it with her right hand over the years I don't know if it came with the finger relief in the side or if she had worn that in over the years from cooking with it so I added that on there so it already has a pre-made finger relief so that the edge of the handle doesn't hurt your finger when you're really getting there and it's stern, stern hard. I apologize if you can hear uh, Liam in the background coughing. He's got a cold and, and uh, it hasn't been too bad for the last few days, but today it seems like it's really settled in his chest and he's been coughing quite a bit. Liam's a, a four-year-old son. And so, uh, please pardon the, the coughing in the back. So number four that we're going to get to today is the kitchen shears. Now, our kitchen shears are, they're okay, but they're not anything special. We'd like to get some better ones. And so we've looked at two that we would like to try out. And perhaps we'll get, but if, if somebody wants to, uh, be really nice and send us one or both, and uh, I'd appreciate that. But Lindsay was talking about maybe uh, approaching the two companies. 